Okay, here we are in Unit 4, Lecture 2, and we're going to continue with this ideas of confidence intervals and hypothesis tests, but the data that we're going to be looking at, um, the statistic that we're going to be measuring is the mean, specifically if we have two samples comparing those means, and if we have two samples that are matched, like before and after on a, for individuals on a weight loss program, or before and after for individuals on maybe a, a test prep program, um, that would be what we call match pairs, and we so that's another t-test that we can do, but that's just on a single variable because we look at the differences. So we're going to look at the comparing uh, means, both the two sample t-tests and the t-tests for matched pairs. Um, it says, should you buy generic or brand name batteries? A student collected the following data in an experiment designed to find the length and minutes different types of batteries lasted, and those are his results. And we have a box plot that does seem to show that generics do last longer than brand name. And they also seem to have less variability. But um, we'd like to know just how much longer they last. Uh, once you've looked at uh, the side-by-side -side box plots, you can turn to the comparison of the two means. Comparing two means is not very different from comparing two portions. This time, the parameter of interest is the difference between the two means, mu1 minus mu2, the standard deviation um, of the difference between two sample means is the sum of the individual standard deviations, uh, the individual variant, you know, you've got your, let's see, your variance for the first one divided by one plus the variance for the second one divided by one. You add those together and take the square root. Now, of course, you don't know the true standard deviation, so you're going to use this standard error formula. This is the formula that you'll use to find your standard error, and then instead of a Z star, you're going to get the T star because you're dealing with a T distribution here. And then T star times your standard error is going to be your margin of error, which you're going to add or subtract on either side of the difference, your estimated difference between the two means. And you'll do all that in Excel. But because we are working with means and estimating the standard error of their differences using the data, uh, we shouldn't be surprised that the sampling model is student's T. And the confidence interval we build is called a two-sample t-interval for the difference. I've written a program um, to help you calculate this, and it requires Office 2010. So if you don't have it, you might need to off, uh, view it through Office Live. Um, here's my formula. Here's what it looks like. And notice the degrees of freedom formula is extremely scary, but I've done it all for you, so hopefully you should be okay. The, formulas that are new are this t dot inverse and the t dot inverse right tail and t dot uh, sorry t dot distribution right tail and t dot distribution those are new in 2010 so we need to make sure that you have that right version of excel running um, we have some conditions we have the independence assumption you need to check these for both groups you need to make sure you have a randomized experiment you want the 10 percent condition we don't usually check this condition for differences of means but we will check it for means only if we have a very small population or an extreme, extremely large sample. You have the normal population assumption. Um, this must be checked for both groups. A violation by either one violates this condition. And then the independent groups assumption, the two groups we are comparing must be independent of each other. If the groups are not independent, then we get to use, we do, that's very important information that we use to um, calculate the difference in the means. So we go back to the battery problem. Judging from the box plot, the generic batteries seem to have lasted about 20 minutes longer than the brand name. Before we can change other, our buying habits, what should we expect might happen with the next batteries we buy? How much longer might the generics last? So we're wondering about what the difference is on average. So um, we can have independent groups. Batteries manufactured by two different companies and purchased in separate packages should be independent. Uh, randomization, we did select the batteries at random, nearly normal condition, the sam samples are small, but the histograms look unimodal and symmetric. So the assumptions and conditions are satisfied to conduct a two-sample t-test and find a 95% confidence interval. Oops. Okay, and so um, what you do is you input the data into, like, into columns in Excel, and then go ahead and calculate the mean, the standard deviation, and the sample size. Now, if the program that I gave you won't let you type it in because I have, I tried to make these um, cells protected so you couldn't overwrite the formulas. If that's true, you might up in the top in the ribbon, you, you want to find, I think it's under somewhere in the ribbon. Let me see if I can find it. 
you're going to want to um, like unprotect the sheet. You may need to do that if it's not letting you. Let's see where it is. Under review, maybe. Yeah, under review, you might have to unprotect the sheet if you want to be able to just type into a different cell. Sometimes it doesn't let you. Okay, so I'm going to, you want to look at, you want to be using this one sample T for the mean. And I'll go ahead and model how I did it. Um, I entered the data into the calc into the computer, so got 190.7. See see how it's not letting me do that, I'm being mean. So I need to go here under, uh, and I'm going to unprotect the sheet. The, the problem here now is that I have to be careful. I don't want to overwrite any of these gray cells because that's where all the formulas are. 190.7, 203.5. Um, 203.5, um, 206.5, 222.5, 222.5, 222.5, 222.5, 4 and we want to get the mean there, so we'll just say equals the average, we'll grab that, and we'll grab this. and then enter, and then we'll get these other numbers, 194, 205.5, 109.2, 172.4, 184, 169.5. We can just grab and get the average calculator for there, and then we'll get our standard deviation of each of these sets of data as well. And then I I went ahead and did the count. Like you can there's a command for count and it'll count how many are in the cell just in case you're having a bad day. But it is six. Alright, so in the sample mean I'm gonna say um, oh look and I'm in the wrong aren't I I'm in the wrong one. I don't feel like redoing this video. So I'm gonna move all of this. I should have been in the two sample T interval. So let me control X out of this and then go to the two sample. So that was good modeling. That can happen. All right, so control V there. Okay, and so the first mean I'm going to put equals this number, and the first standard deviation is equal to this number, and the sample size was six, and the second mean equals this number. And the second standard deviation equals this number. And the sample size is still six. And I wanted a 95% confidence interval. And hopefully my numbers will work out there the same. It's just really not liking me. Okay, and so um, I do get that degree of freedom, the 8.98, and I'm getting those numbers. Let's see, eight. Let's see, the lower level is 1.75, upper is 35.4. So somewhere between 1.7 or 1.8 minutes and 35.4 minutes is what I can expect the mean amount of time that the generic batteries outlasted the brand name batteries. Um, if the generic batteries are cheaper, there seems little reason not to use them. If it's more trouble or cost to buy them, then I consider whether the additional performance is worth it. So that's just my little conclusion. Here's another example. In investigation of environmental causes of disease, data were collected on annual mortality rates, deaths per 100,000 for males in 61 large towns in England and Wales. In addition, the water hardness was reported as the calcium concentrate parts per million in the drinking water. The data set also notes for each town whether it's south or north of Derby. Is there a significant difference in the mortality rates in the two regions? Okay, and so our null hypothesis would be that the, the mortality rates are equal, and our alternative would just be that they are different. Um, we know that the towns were sampled independently. We have to assume the mortality rates in each town are independent of other mortality rates, like, you know, maybe there's not some big feud or gang violence where there's a tit-for-tat death rate, hopefully not. 
Um, we don't have actual data, so we can't look at histograms, but the samples are pretty large, so should we should be okay. So we proceed with a two-sample t-test, and I just inputted the data. I did the two-sample t-test. This time I had to input the data, and I see that the um, for the not equal, I have an extremely small p-value, so we reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence that the mean mortality rate is different for towns north and south of Derby. Um, there is evidence, in fact, that the mortality rate north of Derby is higher, and you can see that from the confidence interval, because we did um, mu1 minus mu2, which was north minus south, and you notice that we have a positive confidence interval, um, and so it's, it means it's a, it doesn't contain zero, so it's greater, greater than zero. Um, now, can we say that has to do with water hardness or whatever they were talking about? No. All we know is it, there could be lots of reasons. It could even be um, the, the wealth in the town, you know, if you are, if more impoverished towns have higher mortality rates. So there's all core types of reasons why that could be the case. The water hardness may not, may or may not be a factor. Okay, now, and we're going to move on now to what we call paired data, and this is what makes this homework a little bit hard, because sometimes the data is paired and sometimes it's not, and you have to be careful, because if it's paired, you want to take advantage of that in, um, in the way that you do your observations. So it says data are paired when observations are collected in pairs, or the observations in one group are naturally related to the observations in the other group. Paired data arise in a number of ways. Perhaps the most common is to compare subjects with themselves before and after a treatment. When pairs arise from an experiment, the pair is a type of blocking. When they arise from an observational study, it's a form of matching. If you know the data are paired, you can and must take advantage of it to decide if the data are paired, consider how they were collected and what they mean. There is no test to determine whether the data are paired. You just have to think about it. Once we know the data are paired, we can examine the pairwise difference. Because it's the differences we care about, we treat them as if they were data, ignore the original set. So you take your sets of data, like your before and after sets of data, and you actually calculate the difference. And then you just have one set of data, which is the differences. And um, now we only have one set of data to consider. We can return to the simple one sample t-test. Um, mechanically, a paired t-test is just a one sample t-test for the mean of pairwise differences. The sample size is the number of pairs. So in your Excel spreadsheet on these, you're just going to go back to the one sample t for the mean in order to make these calculations. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to show you that. All right. So we have a paired data assumption. The data must be paired. We want to make sure that the differences are independent of each other. We want to check for randomization, and we want we need the to assume the population difference follows a normal no model, and we want to check um, the nearly normal condition with a histogram or a normal probability plot of the differences. So when the conditions are met, we are ready to test whether the paired differences differ significantly from zero. We test the hypothesis mu sub d, which is the mean difference, is equal to delta null, which is what is that difference, where most of the time that that's the change. What is the change? Most of the time that change is zero. Okay. Having done poorly on their high school math final in June, students re repeat the course in the summer school and take another exam in August. If we consider those students to be representative of all students who might attend summer school in other years, do these results provide evidence the program was worthwhile? So we want to look at the comparison between the June and August scores. Now, these are, this is a student, this is a student, this is a student, like this student went down, the student went up, the student went up, this one student went down, the student went up, the student went up. So we're just wondering, whether, was it significant, the difference? Um, so the question, the null hypothesis will be that the mean difference between August and June scores is zero and the summer school program is not worthwhile. The alternative hypothesis is that the mean difference between the August and the June scores is zero, is greater than zero, and the summer school program was worthwhile. Um, we have the paired data assumption. We see that the scores are paired by student. We have a randomization condition. We have to assume that these students are representative of all students, which is tricky um, because we have such a small sample. Um, with 10% condition, six students are less than 10% of all students, and the normal population assumption histogram appears to be not nor normal. So we're going to enter the data into two columns in Excel and find the distance between each va data value, and that's going to be in a third column, 
and then we find the mean and the standard deviation on the differences and use those in the t-test. So I put the data in here, and like this was um, June and this was August. So I ended up doing August minus June to look at the difference because I was hoping there was an, that it was greater in June. I mean, but there were a couple months that, or a couple students who actually scored worse. Then I calculated the mean and the standard deviation, and that's what I put in. Now notice I'm just in the one sample, just T interval. So I put in the mean and the standard deviation in the sample size, and I looked for a confidence interval of 0.99, and then I got my p-value I was looking for greater than, and it's 0 0.069. Hmm. With a p-value this large, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There's not strong evidence that the scores increase on average. The summer school program does not appear to be worthwhile. And you can, this is kind of um, uh, uh, supported with the fact that zero is in this confidence interval. And whenever zero is in your confidence interval, that indicates there's not a difference from, from in this case, the null value of zero. Now, um, I, would, I, would, uh, I would be careful here. We didn't have a very big sample size. So um, you don't want to totally disappoint the school system because they thought this program would be worthwhile. It, maybe they need a bigger population to see if it was really effective. Okay, so that um, is the nuts and bolts of working with um, either paired data where you find the difference and then just do a t-test or two independent samples where you do a two-samp t-test and, um, and you have that scary degrees of freedom calculation. And, and the big thing here is you want to get this Excel program working uh, for you because that's why I wrote it. So I hope you enjoy your homework. Bye.